Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the relationship between gain and bandwidth for an ap amplifier. Um, and we're going to start by remembering that for an ideal op amp, uh, we always assume the open loop gain is uh, number one, infinity. Uh, but number two, another um, ideality that we are assuming is that the gain is constant uh, for any frequency. And so if we wanted to um, draw a bit of a comparison, we will say in the case of an ideal op amp, you're making a double assumption. Uh, one is gain, open loop gain, so I'm going to um, say a sub zero, is equal to infinity and... Um, also that uh, the gain is constant, which is equivalent to saying the bandwidth is infinity. So I'm going to say bandwidth is also infinity. Of course, in a, a real op amp, that's not the case. Uh, infinity values are never realizable in, practic in practice. So I'm going to say for a practical op amp, and I'm going to use, um, again, the 741 as, uh, as the op amp I'm referring to. Um, uh, open loop gain is going to be in the order of 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 6 uh, volts per volt. And the uh, typical bandwidth is going to be in the order of 1 megahertz. Um, and that may seem a little low. Um, sometimes the bandwidth, by the way, will also be referred to as the uh, transition frequency F sub T or unity gain frequency or small signal bandwidth. All those are equivalent terms. Um, and again, it, it may seem like a little bit low, uh, but if you remember, uh, the, the op amp had intentionally low bandwidth because we were, um, when we were designing an op amp, we, we want to frequency compensate it, uh, to ensure stability under all possible working conditions. Remember that we will place, um, a dominant pole intentionally or deliberately at a low frequency. And that decreases the bandwidth of the op amp. And with bandwidth, typically all the speed related characteristics will also be worse. But we do that to gain stability. Um, now, if we were to graphically look at uh, the, the frequency response or the magnitude response of the frequency um, response uh, for an op amp, for 741, it might look something like this. Uh, there is an open loop gain. I'm plotting uh, gain as a function of frequency and just the magnitude portion of it versus frequency. And so I will have my open loop gain. And then again, I have my dominant pole, which I have deliberately placed at a low frequency, sometimes in the order of 10 hertz even. And, um, and then I have my frequency starting to decrease after my dominant pole. I'm going to call this um, F sub B for break frequency. Sometimes you also see refer it as F sub C for corner frequency or cutoff frequency. Again, all of those are equivalent terms. It is the frequency at which the gain of the amplifier starts to decrease uh, from its open loop value. Uh, in the Since we have a a uh, single pole model, at least until we get to the next pole, uh, the, we know that the gain is going to decrease after the break frequency at the rate of negative 20 dBs per decade. And at some point, uh, it's going to reach a value, um, the, the amplitude is going to reach a value of 1 or 0 dBs. So if this is my 0 dB point, um, and at the frequency where that happens, that's what we term the transition frequency F sub T, uh, sometimes the small signal bandwidth. Now, important things uh, to, to note in this graph. The note is that FB, the break frequency, or we have referred to as the as the bandwidth. That's really just the open loop bandwidth, meaning it's the bandwidth of the op amp when we have it configured in open loop. And as we mentioned, we're rarely ever going to use the op amp in an open loop configuration. And so we're going to see how uh, if we're going to be able to connect the op amp in negative feedback configuration so that we will bring the gain down, but whatever we're losing gain, 
we increase not just in gain stability, as we have seen, but also in bandwidth. Uh, another important thing to note is the break frequency is the frequency at which uh, uh, the magnitude is 3 dBs below the open loop uh, gain. So it's also termed, you know, the minus 3 dB frequency or the minus 3 dB point. Again, this is not minus 3 dB in absolute terms, but just 3 dBs below uh, the DC value or the open loop uh, gain value. Um, if we were to express that in, in linear terms, this point over here, that will be a sub naught divided by the square root of 2. That will correspond to the minus 3 dB frequency. Um, now, if we wanted to express uh, mathematically the open loop gain of the amplifier as a function of frequency, so open loop gain As function of f, we will use uh, the expression for a single pole low pass filter because that's essentially what this is. Um, it's a you know it's a system which has multiple poles, but by placing the dominant pole as this low frequency, we ensure that at least until we reach f t, we have no interference from any other poles, and so this system behaves effectively as a single pole low pass filter. And so the equation is going to be the equation for for the um, single pole opus filter. So it's going to be equal to the open loop gain divided by 1 plus j omega divided by uh, omega sub b, the break frequency, or equivalently a sub naught 1 plus j f divided by f sub b, since omega and f are related by a factor of 2 pi. And so two things to notice, just qualitatively. Uh, first thing, we'll notice that for uh, frequencies that are well below the break frequency, if we look at the mathematical expression, we can see that uh, the term that's multiplying the j is going to be very small, um, ideally 10 to 0 as f approaches 0. And so this is just going to approximate a naught divided by 1. And so we can say that in that case, the magnitude response as a function of frequency is going to be approximately equal to the open loop gain and constant. As the frequency goes beyond the break frequency, um, we can approximate the magnitude response is going to be magnitude of the numerator divided by magnitude of the denominator. Um, magnitude of the numerator is a naught. Magnitude of the denominator is going to be a square root of 1 squared plus f divided by fb, all of that is squared. Um, and so if we do the calculation, it's going to be approximately fb divided by f. Since f over fb is going to be much greater than 1, we approximate the magnitude of the denominator as the square root of f divided by fb squared. The square goes with the square root, and that's how we end up with this expression. Uh, important thing to notice is that in that case, I forgot to write the first half of the equation. This is the magnitude of the base of f, that's what's equal to a naught fb divided by f. Uh, notice that there is an inverse relationship between the magnitude of the gain and the frequency. Um, magnitude of gain decreases with increasing frequency. Um, but this is also what we observe in the plot. It decreases at a rate of minus 20 dB per decade. Now, the important point is, uh, or an unimportant point here, is when we reach unity gain, when the gain becomes equal to 1. And that's when f is equal to the transition frequency ft. And so I can substitute that in this expression, and I can say when f is equal to f sub t, then my magnitude... a sub f is equal to a naught fb divided by ft. And I also know that uh, this magnitude is equal to 1, because by definition, that's the location of ft. And so with that equation, I can write the following expression. I can say ft then is equal to a naught 
times fb, which is an important expression. It tells me that the, the unity gain frequency is equal to the product of the open loop gain and the break frequency, which is in essence the open loop bandwidth. Okay. Um, this happens to be an expression that uh, holds also for um, closed loop gain and closed loop bandwidth with uh, a slight modification. But it just so happens if I am to connect my op-amp, for example, in a negative feedback configuration, I will bring down my gain. So let's imagine my closed loop gain was sitting here. Uh, but what happens is that I will essentially increase the bandwidth of my system. And so my new break frequency, I can call this my, um, I'm going to call it the, the closed loop bandwidth. So we don't confuse it with um, any other frequency. And my response will be something like that. Um, and so we generally term this product uh, or, or even the transition frequency FT, Sometimes it's also referred to as the game bandwidth product. And so I'm just going to write here uh, transition frequency, or I'm actually going to call it unity game frequency because I think that's uh, perhaps a more descriptive name. And so I have my unity game frequency is equal to the open loop gain times the break frequency, which I mentioned, is the open loop bandwidth. And again, uh, generally speaking, um, I could say that this relationship also applies to closed loop um, it has negative feedback systems. And so in general, I can write uh, that my unity gain frequency is equal to um, my closed loop gain times my closed loop bandwidth. And I said that this needs a, a modification uh, because this is in all reality an approximation. Um, the the little tweak that we need to do in order to make this expression more accurate will be that um, we shouldn't be referring to the signal gain, that's in essence ACL, but rather to the noise gain, because as we mentioned, the noise gain is the one that determines the stability of a system. Um, and so this, if we wanted to uh, write it more accurately, we will write that the unity gain frequency is equal to uh, the noise gain uh, which is in essence, noise gain always refers to a closed loop system, times the closed loop bandwidth. Uh, and this will be the, the uh, more accurate expression. So, you know, I'm gonna, I don't want to call it correct, so I'm just going to say more accurate. expression. Notice that from here we can derive another expression for our um, noise gain um, or for the bandwidth of the system. So I can let's say my uh, closed loop bandwidth of a system is going to be equal to the transition frequency divided by the noise gain. Uh, something to notice is that uh, bandwidth, as we can see, uh, increases as the noise gain decreases. Uh, so that's uh, an important qualitative relationship to keep in mind. I'm going to make sure that I point out that is the noise gain. And then um, oftentimes we are going to want to use uh, the approximation expression just because it's simpler. More, more often than not, we know what is the signal gain of our system and we don't want to bother calculating the noise gain. Um, and so we want to know when can we use the first equation instead of having to go the extra step of calculating noise gain. Um, and the answer to that is whenever uh, you know the noise gain is close to uh, the closed loop gain. And typically that's going to be uh, the higher the value of the gain, 
the closer the two are going to be together. And we're going to see some examples of that in the next video. Uh, but the important thing to note here is, you know, also the effect that uh, including negative feedback in a system has had uh, on the bandwidth, uh, essentially by decreasing the gain. And so in conclusion to this, I could say that negative feedback um, increases bandwidth by decreasing gain since the product of gain times bandwidth remains constant. And again, that's an important uh, consideration. And if you want it to be a little bit more proper, you will just remember that you're talking about noise gain. So let's take a look at how uh, that applies in a practical situation in the next video. Thank you.